station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready for the event. MPRSC, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. See, how do you hear me? MBRC station, I got you loud and clear. Sultan and Yadi, شكراً أخوي سعود على هذه الفرصة الجميلة it brings the memory of the first inhabited mission to space. Yuri Gagarin's mission in the 60s. We're talking about 62 years from the first inhabited mission. And thank God the UAE has taken important steps, beautiful ones, in the inhabited uh, mission with probes and satellites. So we want to follow the same pace in the space sector that is full of sciences and researchers. And for our media representatives, uh, the message will definitely be clear. So thank you very much for your presence, and I'm ready for your questions, for any of your questions. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm from Emirates Today newspaper. We're very happy and would like to thank the Mohammed Rashid Space Center for this opportunity. And the UAE people are all happy and proud of you. And even as media representatives, we're happy to be here. Here's a question. We are following up your journey for a long time. And you're always on Twitter and you're tweeting. So the question is, Mr. Salah said to ask difficult questions or challenging ones. Do you feel fear? When we see you there, we feel scared. What is, how do you feel when you're up there in the International Space Station? Thank you, Muna, and uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Salam and Murray. These questions, any question, will never be will never be difficult, and we'll try to answer them as much as we know. Of course, fear is a natural human feeling. We fear the unknown or the unfamiliar. Going to space as someone who goes there for the first time, naturally, I I can't call it fear, but it's a feeling of respect. We we go to space with uh, flammable fuel, and but we're ready to deal with any challenging or urgent situations. But I have but I have excitement more than fear. I was very happy when the media, when the media, media with, was with me at the beginning, and, and now I'm even more happy that now I am at the International Space Station. Hello, Sultan. This is Mohammed Al Kabi from Dubai TV. There is an Arabic saying: "Who lives with 40 people for, with people for 40 days, he becomes with them." Now you are on the International Space Station. And you're definitely one of the best to represent the UAE in the space sector. Now, after 40 days, what is Sultan Niyadi's status? Physically, uh, especially uh, if you have any insomnia, if you're having trouble waking up or sleeping, and we wish you all the best. Thank you, Mohammed. 40 days passed like they were a week, to be very honest. And thank God, as we arrived, we had a small period, which is 
receive the receival of our crew, uh, crew six and crew five that departed. So, a couple of days later, Dragon 27 arrived. So, in the previous period, we were so busy, we couldn't feel time pass by. But thank God, the crew I am with right now is not only, I haven't worked them for 40 days, but for years. So I'm within my space family right here. We're working together. We're sharing our ideas. And thank God, adapting generally in the beginning of those days, uh, directions, the sense of directions were difficult, calculating time. The sun rises and sets in four, 45 times. It's a sunset and a sunrise. But we have adapted to this environment. We know how to adjust our biological clock on the GMT timing, which is the official timing for the station. And the days have passed quickly, but we're grateful that we had a lot of scientific production. Of course, as astronauts, we have to conduct a lot of experiments. As for sleeping, I might say the sleeping was very hard at the beginning to be in a sleeping bag and close your eyes. But to be honest, I'm at an enjoyment phase at the moment. I only close my eyes and go to sleep. So it's it's a thrill that I cannot describe. Thank you, Mohammed. Hello, Sultan. This is Sarat from The National. Um, I want to ask you, how do you think your mindset has changed since you've been in the space station for so long? Astronauts talk about the overview effect. How do you think you've changed as sort of a person in view Earth um, since been being on the space station? And of course, I have to ask, what are you missing at home? Thank you. Thank you, Sarwat, and very, very, very good question. Um, honestly, uh, arriving to the International Space Station and looking down to Earth and seeing our beautiful planet, it's, it's as you mentioned, it's the overall uh, picture of, of this uh, magnificent planet that everything happened throughout the history, the people we knew, uh, all the events throughout uh, the time, the human beings living on Earth. It's, it's a profound experience, actually. And personally, uh, I do feel like we do need to keep this planet intact. Just today, I was flying over the Himalayas, and I saw that boundary between air pollution and the clouds and the other side of the Himalayas. And I, I thought, wow, this is, this is really incredible, seeing like a, a barrier of smoke uh, uh, just trying to jump over the Himalayas. So we need to protect this planet. We need to be happy in this planet. So as an, astro as an astronaut on board the International Space Station, I do value the oxygen, I do value uh, water, and I do value the ability to breathe uh, uh, a clean atmosphere, which we get uh, for free on Earth. So let's keep this planet intact, let's keep it uh, tidy and clean, and hopefully we can live uh, as much as uh, Allah wants. Hello, Sultan. This is Ahmed from Albayan newspaper. Thank you for this great effort that you made in the past 40 days. You were so active that we couldn't keep up with the many activities you were doing. My question to you is the experiments and the accurate ones, uh, the medical ones and many scientists, uh, many scientists. Can you tell us about those tests and, and, and uh, how challenging are they are to practice and speak? And can you tell us about the experiences uh, uh, how, how much have you completed from your uh, experiment so far? Have you started with them? And what is left? Thank you, Ahmed. The activities, if, if, I, if, I, if you can keep up, I'll try to reduce them. Those activities that we do, I've worked on heart fabrics, heart cells, uh, also cures for diabetes, uh, printing on in 3D printing for fibers, 
for the knees and for different parts of the human body if we have our own uh, vegetation nursery as well. All of these, they definitely come with a benefit to humanity. The question is, why do we do this effect? On Earth, we have gravity that makes very minute things, or, or it makes testing very challenging. So we take these into perspective. For example, heart fibers that we work on, we can see those fibers or, or cells in, in the early stages as a small ore. So the no-gravity environment, it allows scientists to see those cells as in a circular or kind of a form. It, it's as if you've seen the early creation of those uh, of those cells. We also have uh, programs that and and experiments from universities. Until now, I haven't worked on them, but in the next five months, we'll work on them and definitely we'll try to overflow you with the results of these experiments. Hello, Brother Sultan. I hope you're well. This is Khaled from the media office. We, as media representatives, would like to thank you for giving the opportunity to us to speak to you. And we also thank you for enriching us on, in the content that you are relaying to us from where you are right now. My question to you is, is a personal question. Mental health. Do you have any mental health challenges? You are very far from it. Or very, very far from your comfortable planet. Can you tell us about that comfort zone and mental health while in space? Thank you very much. It is our duty to relay the events that happen on the International Space Station, scientific ones and, and the general ones to our media representatives. As I said, 62 years from the first inhabited space mission, we have to spin this wheel in our Arab region and educate people with things that perhaps were we, we lacked and we forgot about for many, many years. As for your questions, obviously there are challenges. That a person looks from space at planet Earth, this planet he lived on for many years, and he sees that it's protected with a with a very with a very thin layer. And this this planet is exposed to a lot of uh, a lot of factors. So we have to develop the science the sciences that can preserve this planet and protect. It. But psychologically, I'm on board the International Space Station, and as I speak to you, we have ways to communicate with our families and our loved ones on a daily basis, by email or voice, trans voice transmission or even visual ones, which, of course, keeps us at ease, keeps us happy. And if our loved ones are good, we are good. If they're happy, we're happy. And if you're good, then I'm happy as well. This is what motivates me to present everything that I have towards this mission and to complete it in the best way possible. And as I said, we have an amazing crew. We live on this uh, on this station. We help each other. We learn from each other in in this six month period. And after that, we'll be back achieving a lot and succeeding in almost every way we were interested in. Uh, Sultan, this is Carla from Wired Middle East. Um, I have a, a small question for you. Obviously, this sort of mission takes so much preparation, so much time, a lot of willpower. What was the most unexpected thing that you encountered in your time on the ISS?
Thank you for your question. This is very interesting, actually. Um, as you mentioned, we've been training for years. So um, the moment we arrived here, I thought, wow, this is incredible. This is just what we train for, except for a lot of wiring, obviously. It's not uh, as clean as the mock-ups on, on, on Earth. But honestly, that the amount of hours of, of training that we received is, is, was, was sufficient for us to immediately start working on board the International Space Station. But uh, th there was nothing uh, except for uh, how time really flies. I mean, it, it was really quick in the first few days. Um, we have a schedule and we have a red line that we have to, to maintain. So if you're running behind the red line, then you're late. And we, the, the aim is to go beyond or uh, in front of that line, not to be uh, late. So maybe that, that was the main uh, take for me, for example. Time really flies like really, really fast. Assalamu alaikum, Akhoi Sultan. Hello, Brother Sultan. This is Abdullah Raisi, content creator. Before you traveled, I filmed a video of how do you fast on, in space. It got over half a million views, so thank you for that. My question is a bit different today. We are media representatives, and we are the link between you and everyone. What are the messages you want us to focus on and relate to the community? How, how can we be, well, even if it were a small part of this? And we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Brother Abdullah. As you said at the beginning, at the beginning in the interview, your presence as media representatives, you are our mirror that relays the right information to people. So, as you can see, we are in a scientific mission that will come as a great benefit to humanity. So, we need you to relay those messages with the most transparency and accuracy and credibility. The information that you get has to be relayed in a, in a way that is easy to comprehend and understand from our listeners and viewers. We have different uh, ages, our children, the youth, and old people as well. Some scientific things may be dry, so we try to, as you say, uh, simplify it uh, in, in a humorous kind of a way for people to understand it. So I liked and I loved in some of the videos that you've seen that I introduced people to some of the laws of physics. Science, as you know, if you say it in a very honest and raw way in a scientific form, it will be very dry and people may not comprehend it. But through you, we'll be able to relay all of our physics information, the nature of living in space, in a very friendly to understand kind of a way. That is our duty and that is yours as well. Hello, Sultan. This is Yassim from Bapra TV. I'd like to add my question to a direction to from colleague Mohamed al Kabi regarding mental health. Today, the uh, physical factors have changed. The weather, climate, all of these things have changed. What are the things that the astronaut faces in space? Thank you, brother. The challenges, as we said before, living in space is very difficult and challenging. We don't walk on our legs. We hang on to things and we bully ourselves. So the feet, primarily, they actually lose some of their strength in space. So we have to do a daily practice for two days. We have we have a we have a treadmill. We have weights to lift, and the focus is on the legs and the back because you have muscles in these parts. There are people who did not train properly, and so they get back with some medical problems that requires rehabilitation. So from this information, we're trying to focus on the bones as well, so it can maintain its density and our muscles as well, so we can have the right physique. And thankfully, we have a mechanism to measure the weight. 
and to also convert it into the right units. This, these units, after they're measured, it goes to specific doctors. I'd like to mention Dr. Hanan Suwedi. I always uh, follow up my medical uh, file with her. And my body weight is stable and perfect. But if there is a problem in the weight, a lot of things will change. The diet and the way of eating or the portions of the food that I intake or ingest. So all of this is followed up in addition to some of the studies that, uh, that uh, focus on DNA, blood circulation. We are exposed to radiation because we're not protected as you are on, on planet Earth. So our position exposes us to radiation and and uh, we are exposed to uh, to variant portions of radiation during our stay here but we uh, we have doctors that follow up on us psychologically and physically as well you made us live a lot of exciting moments i have a question have you ever faced any technical challenges or problems during those 40 days? Second thing, I want to know what's the first thing you said when you arrived to the International Space Station. This is Noura from the Saudi news platform, News Khabar. Hello, Noura. And since you come from Saudi, I'd like to tell you that our brothers, Ali Garni and Rayana Barnawi, are going to be here in, uh, in countable days in the coming period. And they will share these moments with, with you, and I'll be very happy to receive them as they arrive. Generally, as I said in some of the questions, that the um, emergency situations are we are familiar with them we're trained we're well trained to deal with emergency situations and we have we have we have crews in in Houston or in Moscow or in Munich or even in Europe or ESA, and in Japan as well in Cuba all of these crews station this is Houston ACR and that concludes our event Thank you to all participants from the United Arab Emirates and across the region. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.